Yesterday, there was a debate that broke out on Twitter uh, in reference to who was wide receiver you. Now, we are going to do this as an SEC edition because LSU fans, I know you're going to get upset. Alabama fans, to some extent, I think you will get upset. The only other team that I will hear an argument oh, on, like the only team that I will listen to when it comes to wide receiver you, besides an LSU, would be an Ohio State. That's neither here nor there. But yesterday, from out of College Station, you know, not completely, but the wide receiver you debate and argument came to light. And I, the first thing that I did when I saw it, heard it, and saw the debate was, you know what, I wonder how many guys that, had been drafted for at wide receiver from Texas A&M. And I know that this debate is going to probably spark some Texas A&M fans to get mad. I am just looking at guys that have been drafted since you entered the SEC in 2012, which I think is a good moniker to start off with. It gives a long, long runway for us to look at when you enter the SEC, just how many guys have you had that have been next level. Listen, when it comes to who is the best team that produces wide receivers, now you're going to probably already say I'm biased in saying this, but it is LSU. Now let me start right here and saying, I don't come on around your SEC when we do this show and segment and talk about LSU hardly ever because I talk about them so much everywhere else. But today, we're going to talk about him because since 2012 and since Texas A&M has come into the league and since the debate kind of somewhat started out of College Station, I just wanted to point this out. LSU has had 11 players since 2012 when A&M came in that has been drafted into the NFL. Guys like Ruben Randall, Odell Beckham, Jarvis Landry, Malachi Dupree, James Wright, DJ Charks, Russell Gage, Justin Jefferson could just stop there. Jamar Chase, Ricey McMath, Kayshawn Booty, and oh, by the way, they're going to have two first-round picks this year with Malik Neighbors and Brian Thomas Jr. Texas A&M, as an example, though, over that same exact span, has only had five. Five guys since 2012 have been drafted from Texas A&M wide receiver. Now, they have a really good one in Mike Evans. They got drafted by Tampa in the first round. But he is the only first-round wide receiver that they've had the Johnny Manziel era since they've been in the league. See, the only two teams in this conference, the only two that have the debate is LSU and Alabama. Because LSU has had 11 guys that have been drafted into the draft. Alabama has 10. Now, I, even though Alabama has a lot of quantity quantity of guys that have been drafted, they don't have the quality. Nobody in their right mind can look at LSU since 2012 and say to themselves that LSU has not been the best school in this conference in producing wide receivers. I can look at two. Justin Jefferson, arguably the best wide receiver in the NFL right now. Odell Beckham, what he has done in the NFL. Jamar Chase, what he has done. I could stop right there and say, hey, listen, nobody is on the same type of level that those guys are. The only guy that you could say would be it would be Amari Cooper for Alabama and maybe Devonta Smith. But Devonta Smith is actually from Louisiana, so how many brandy points do you give Alabama? I'll give it to you. They're not Justin Jefferson. They're not Jamar Chase. Oh, by the way, they're producing another two first-round picks. You know, I look at this and say to myself, you're going to have four first-round wide receivers get drafted since 2012 if you're LSU. So when you look at a kid like DeCorian Moore, when you look at a kid – that is around the nation or a kid that's from Louisiana and his dream is to grow up and want to be a wide receiver from LSU. It's because of what they've done over a decade plus. 
by the way, even before 2012 when A&M came to the league, since they want to have the debate, I guess, there's no real team in the South. There's only arguably one team that you could say in college football that has the not only quantity but quality of guys that have come from that position. I thought it was an interesting debate, but if you're an LSU fan or an Alabama fan, look at some of these names like DJ Chark, Odell, Jarvis Landry, Russell Gage, a six-round guy still in the league producing at a high level, Justin Jefferson, Jamar Chase. I mean, really and truthfully, a and ain't got no damn body. I mean, they got Mike Evans and Ryan Swoop, the great white hope. Bama has some good ones, man. I mean, Amari Cooper, Calvin Ridley. I mean, the first some of the first round guys that they've had, like Henry Ruggs, Jerry Judy, eh, you know, like eh. Oh, by the way, I forgot Terrace Marshall in here. So twelve. That's my bad. So let me let me back up. Twelve dudes from LSU have been drafted. I just got that in my ear. Yeah, we missed Terrace Marshall. So 12 to 10. Let me finish this by saying, I, I know AM fans don't really like me. It's okay. But this whole thing about wide receiver you, I mean, you can't have five guys that have been drafted or, or talk about it or where you're trying to go. You would have to have a decades plus worth of just undeniable great athletes and great draft picks at AM. AM is the guy at the bar who thinks that they're really cool and thinks that they're a dude. But the only reason why they have all the shiny stuff and why people hang out with them is because their daddy's got money. I would love for anybody to tell me one thing that Texas AM does that is on the pinnacle of any of these other schools that they try to compare themselves to. You know, what Texas A&M does is they don't want to be lumped in with the Kentuckys. They don't want to be lumped in with maybe a, the Floridas, the Tennessees, the Arkansas. Maybe they're not as bad as Arkansas. They haven't been as bad as Arkansas. But they're trying to grasp and reach for being on the top of this conference. And when it comes to college football, to the Georgias, the LSUs, the Alabamas, and really and truthfully, I know I just mentioned Florida, which we'll talk about in just a moment. Even the Floridas in the, since 2012. They're not in the, they want to be in that in that tier when it comes to everybody else and everything else. They can't be. They won't be. It is what it is. But I thought it was funny. When I saw them try to compare themselves, which they they quite honestly always do. Now, I, I'm not trying to get in a fight. I'm not trying to get in some kind of long-form debate. I don't need to get in a long-form debate with anybody that covers Texas a and about this. I mean, you've done a really good job along the defensive line, right? Like, I mean, you've done good, but so has everybody else. I think Texas a and is, is the team that you can't put them, you know, in the tier with the Kentuckys because they have more wins than all of those teams. But they try to, you know, grasp up. They try to play up to who they think that they are when they're really not. They're, they're really not. They've had one good year, really, in the SEC. Oh, we won nine wins during COVID. Okay, sounds great. Sound, sound good? Great for you, man. Great for you. Great that you actually got to nine wins. But I, I just never understand, like, the cockiness. Uh, truth be told, I think you're more of a baseball school, and you should dive more into that. You want to be a football school, you're not going to be right now. You got a long way to go. Even if you went undefeated 15-0, when it comes to a decade's worth of teams that have done shit that's worth a damn, you're not in that pedestal. You won't be in that pedestal. So 12, believe it or not, I left one up. 12 guys have been drafted from LSU since 2012. 10 from Alabama, 5. From Texas A&M. 
Dude, five dudes. How big?